in just about every single lesson that we've been working on so far, we've been practicing translating from just regular written word into mathematical statements. So we've been doing all of this for a purpose. The reason we've been doing all this is because eventually we're going to have to learn how to deal with actual word problems, real application type problems. So, and you can see I said insert groans here because I know that you all are all groaning at this point. But you know, we're leading into this, and this is a natural progression of steps here. It's really not that bad, especially since you've been practicing on writing all of, uh, you know, translating these things in the past. Um, you have to know these keywords. There's a table here that's listed. These are, you know, by no means every single word, but they are the most popular, the ones that you'll see the most often. You absolutely have to understand what, whenever you see divided into, that that is a, a an English word that means the mathematical operation of division. So you have to, you really have to memorize these. You have to understand them. As long as you understand um, these key words, that's going to go a long ways towards helping you be able to, to work these types of problems, okay? Now there's also some strategies, and um, they list them out as problem-solving steps. I don't know that I would necessarily call them steps, as in you have to do this one first and then this one. Um, I would call them more like a, um, a procedure or um, a suggestion or uh, something like that. Now, the first thing you must do before you begin working on any kind of word problems is you have to understand the problem. And that means reading the problem, reading it again, and I always like to kind of take a step back then, not necessarily reading and looking at the problem over and over and over again, but just take a step back and try and figure out what in the world are they talking about? You know, what kind of information have they given? How are these things related? You know, I just take a step back and try and think through the problem. Just get a basic understanding of what it's saying, what it's asking, how the things are related. Another suggestion that they give you is to construct a drawing, which is an extremely uh, helpful idea as long as you have, uh, you know, something that you can draw out. You know, if they're talking about triangles or rectangles or, you know, a house with a lot or um, something like that, anything that you can make a picture, just a quick little drawing to say, uh, you know, here's what's going on and kind of get you a visual idea of it. That's very, very helpful. Now the next one says propose a solution and check. Well, you know, you're, you, this is all part of that understanding process where you are trying to figure out, you know, what they're talking about, how are these things related. That all kind of goes along with that. Uh, the last one says choose a variable to represent the unknown. Use this variable to represent any other unknowns. This is absolutely crucial. In every single word problem that you do, you have to identify what your variable is. You have to literally write out X is whatever, number of trees in a lot, or, um, you know, dollars, or whatever it is that you're, that you're calling it. You have to be able to keep this information um, together. The next part says translate the problem into an equation, which we've worked on before. Then we solve that equation, which is the next progression. And then lastly, it says interpret the results. Check the proposed solution in the stated problem and state your conclusion. This is where you go back and you reread the problem and make sure that what your answer, when it, whatever you've gotten for your answer makes sense. Make sure that it actually answers the question that was proposed to you. In the next lessons, we'll begin actually working some of these problems.